you put the fear of God into the whoever, and then left. Uh, and it's not that. There's actually, this is actually a much, much deeper topic. So I, let's start off with the beginning. The men in black phenomenon, as it's called, it, it dates back to the 50s, correct? Uh, after World War II is, is when this uh, phenomenon started, with the, the men in black and the, the suits with the fedoras. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole sort of life cycle modern era of the UFO subject sort of took up in 47 with a pilot named Kenneth Arnold who had a sight of like a, like a fleet of UFOs over Mount Rainier in Washington State. Uh, but the, the weird thing is that although Arnold's sighting was 47, the men in black phenomenon really didn't begin until about 51, 52. Although there were a few sporadic reports like that, it, it wasn't sort of developed into a phenomenon at that time. So what happened? It all began in a town called Bridgeport, Connecticut, involving a man named Albert Bender. And Albert Bender was someone who was, when the whole UFO subject kicked off in 47, he was sort of in his mid to late 20s then. So, turn, turn of the early 50s, he was around about 30 thereabouts. And um, he had a deep interest in UFOs, but also the world of the paranormal in both fact and fiction. He was heavily into sort of um, the occult, life after death, ghosts, but also horror fiction, um, like H.P. Lovecraft and, um, and movies and things like that. And he set up a UFO program called the International Flight Source of Europe. And for whatever reason, we're not really sure why, but unlike a lot of other groups that were set up at the time, this one really caught the public's imagination. And in no time at all, Bender was selling like in excess of a thousand copies of his journal, monthly journal, every month. And this wasn't just in the US, it was Australia, Britain, different parts of Europe, all over the place. And he really developed this huge network of followers. And then quite literally out of the blue, and only about five, six months after the magazine had been going, he shut it down and he also shut down the International Flying Saucer Bureau. 